going to be talking about vintage clothes and how you can tell by looking at a garment about how old it is. Um, whether you are thrifting and you come across something you think might be vintage or you're online and you're trying to decide if the seller has correctly identified the period of the clothes. So, um, first off we're going to start talking about closures. Now one of the big things that can help you pick off if a garment is vintage or not and by vintage, I'm going to be talking about like anything before the 60s, um, just because that's more the period that I'm interested in and kind of a lot of things happened during the 60s that we can use as convenient cutoff points. First off are zippers. And um, most clothes from before the 60s are gonna have metal zippers in them as opposed to plastic zippers, which you would find in a modern garment. Um, they also tend to have zippers on the side of the dress. See this one's here on the side, as opposed to down the back, where a lot of modern dresses have them. And a lot of them have a lapped zipper. Let's just see if I can show you this where the zipper has, there's like a little flap that covers the zipper as opposed to having the zipper exactly centered in the opening. It'll be offset. That was really popular, particularly in the 40s, to have this lapped zipper. So, some kinds of other closures you can look for are things with snaps. Um, snaps were very popular. Um, and even before in the 30s and the 20s, instead of having that side zipper, a lot of times it would have the side snaps. Um, zippers were around, um, but they were not very popular yet to have in garments. And then also buttons and buttonholes. All right. Um, next we're gonna talk about seam finishes which is probably, if you're not a sewer, not something you've ever really thought about. Pretty much everything you will find in um, a modern store is surged. Um, almost everything is surged nowadays. So uh, when you're looking at clothes, if you see surging, it's probably not in that old period that we're looking at. So how might they have finished their garments? Um, sometimes they didn't have any seam finishing. You can see on this dress, there's nothing. It's just the raw fabric. Or, find where that part went. It might be pinked. I don't know why, but this one part here is pinked. You can see it's got those little triangles and that comes from a special kind of scissors called pinking shears. That was a really popular seam finish as well. Um, they also might be hand overcast, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. It's really hard to see. But if you can see there's some really tiny stitches on the edge. It almost looks like the wimpy version of serging, but this would have been hand stitched over the edge of the seam finish. All right, next on the list is hems. Um, vintage garments tend to have much deeper hems than modern garments because they were really concerned with making the clothes last as long as possible possibly doing hand-me-downs and stuff like that where they might need to adjust the garment um, versus modern clothes where the manufacturer is more concerned about saving as much fabric as possible because your garment's probably not going to last to be handed down to another person. So, um, let me find 
is this one. None of these actually have a particularly deep hem. This one you can see has a small, let's see, a small hem, just folded over twice and stitched. Um, this dress actually had a deeper hem, but I re-hemmed it to be shorter. So that is something you have to look out when you're looking on hems. If it's been let out for a taller person, then there obviously won't be as much hem allowance. Um, this skirt has a facing that was put in. A nice deep facing. This is not, again, not something that you tend to see on a modern garment. Like that. Or this skirt also has a facing. It's much smaller. It has rayon seam tape on there. And then if you look at this blouse, we can see a really nice, nice deep hem on there. Again, if the garment's been rehemmed, this isn't one that's super easy to use. Um, but it can be something to look for. Alright, next is tags. Now there's one tag that is really important to look for and it's really easy. It's generally the first thing that I look at once I kind of spy something on the thrift store rack that I think might be vintage based just on the print and the uh, style of the garment. Um, I look for care instructions. So if you have a modern dress or garment, somewhere on there will be one of these tags and it will tell you what it's made out of, what size it is, and how to wash it. So if these um, were started to be put in the garments during the 60s. So if you see one of these care tags in there, you know that it is at least passed into the 60s and not any older than that. Because people, I guess, got enough disconnected from the garment process that they didn't necessarily know how to wash things. They weren't expected to know that anymore. So that is the big thing. Look for that tag. Now obviously this tag it could have been lost or ripped out or removed at some point in time. Um, and also it's often somewhere different other than at the normal back of the neck. It might be on the side or in the back or somewhere out of the way. So make sure you look carefully for that tag. Now vintage dresses, um, if they came from a store versus were handmade, might also have some really fun tags like this dress has a tag it's nothing like crazy exciting but you can see the really pretty text um, you can see it's of Dallas so this was made in the United States and underneath is the little size tag you can see that it is size 18, which does not correspond to a modern 18. So if you are seeing a size tag, um, vintage sizing, you know, thinking like the 30s through the 50s, um, the sizes went, the small size would be 12. So it would be 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then bigger than 20 would be larger than that. Now this number corresponds to the bust, your bust. Sorry, it doesn't correspond to the bust size. Um, if you see 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, etc. on a blouse, that corresponds to the bust size. But um, just for comparison, my bust size fits in a vintage size 18, sometimes a 16 if it's extra roomy. Um, and I wear a modern size um, 8 or 10. So they don't necessarily correspond to um, 16, 18, etc. that we have nowadays. Um, and here is an example of a less, this is a newer blouse. I think it is 60s. It's not that kind of like woven, like brocade type stuff where the lettering is thread. It's a printed label. 
it has the serging on the seams um, but it does not have that care tag so um, and based on the style I believe this is probably early to mid 60s all right the last thing we're going to talk about is fibers um, because not all of the materials that we have today were available at all periods in the past. So um, natural fibers such as cotton, linen, wool, etc., those things have been available for a long, 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 long time. So if you have something that's a natural fiber, that's a good thing. Rayon um, was very, very popular in the 40s as a silk substitute. And um, so rayon garments are really popular. This one here, I believe, is rayon. And it definitely it has a different sort of feel and drape from, let's say, cotton. And rayon is actually made from processed bamboo. So it's kind of on the edge. It's kind of the first synthetic that wasn't quite synthetic. And... Um, then once we get further into the 50s and the 60s, more and more synthetic fibers become available. So we get like polyester and acetate and things like that. So um, if you see something that is polyester, high polyester content, acetate, um, those things are probably not in this old vintage category. And um, especially in the 50s, any of the kind of synthetic or the synthetic natural fiber blends had like brand names so you're likely to see that um, or if you're looking at say a magazine advertisement it might have a name like that that's usually a synthetic blend or a synthetic a brand name all right the last thing I wanted to talk about for fabrics was the type of fabric now most vintage garments are woven which means they don't stretch. They're not like t-shirts. They're like a blouse where it's and not stretchy. And you can see that you have some threads going this way and some threads going that way and it'll be woven like on a loom. However, you do occasionally find vintage jersey. Jersey is a knit fabric um, like a t-shirt. And if you look really closely, you can actually see the little rows of knitting. Now the thing about vintage jersey is it's not stretchy. So you can see it doesn't stretch. It's not stretchy like modern jersey is. So if you find something that looks like a knit, but it doesn't stretch, it's likely to be vintage jersey, which is really great because they got this great slinky and they don't wrinkle. So I love some vintage jersey. So that's something else you can look out for. All right, so those are the things to look for when you're looking at vintage clothing. And now I'm gonna show you a vintage reproduction dress and show you some of the things on it that can help you decide how it's modern. First off, closures. Closure is in the center back, like this. We have a centered zipper as opposed to that lap zipper and the zipper itself is plastic. Seam finishes. If we look, we can see this kind of surging like you would see on any kind of modern garment. The hem is teeny, teeny, tiny. Smallest hem ever. Tags. Oops. Um. Now this dress does have that woven label and it's kind of nice, kind of reminiscent of the vintage style, but we can see that it has the care instructions and it also has a non-vintage sizing. This is a large. And then um, this is a cotton dress, but um, if it was, for example, polyester or acetate, or a lycra or something we know, not vintage. 
So um, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you next time you are shopping for vintage. Thanks for watching.